Michael Molchanoff's uh, house. Uh, Michael won Marla uh, this year with a blue checker hen and uh, that particular bird was nearly an hour in front of the uh, second winning bird in the association. Michael, what was the uh, breeding of your Marla winner? Uh, it's an import, uh, James Bond Jansen mixture and uh, on both sides of the parents mm -hmm. and, uh, but there was a bit of inbreeding and she was, she was an outcross of that. Right. Um, I understand um, Greg Hamilton um, bought your winning bird, Michael. Yes, I sold it to him. Uh, he, he was interested in it uh, and uh, so uh, made an offer on it and uh, I've accepted it so he's got the bird now. Mm. Hopefully it some good birds for him. Well, I think she will be if he does the right thing with her because she's got good, uh, well, good genes, uh, the right DNA for racing and that sort of thing. So. Yeah. So I, I know that for a fact. So he, he whether he's selling youngsters or whether he breeds for himself, if he uh, breeds them the right way, he's going to breed a few very good ones. Yeah. I know that. Yeah. Yeah. Did Marla win your first associate win, Michael? No, she was my second associate win. In 2008, I had won uh, Cuba PD. I had first and second in Cuba PD. Actually, I had five birds and first 30 in that race. Right. And she's my, uh, well, this is uh, two years later, she won, the, the, this one had won the Marla. Mm. So it's my second as a HPA winner. Yeah. Uh, how did you become interested in racing pigeons, Michael? Well, this was in about 1973. I got married in 1970 in Melbourne and I moved to Adelaide as a, kid I used to have fancy pigeons so when I got married and came to Adelaide to settle down and live here I bought a couple of turbids and uh, I, I tried to break them in later on and one of them got out and uh, I used to live at Kilkenny and he uh, and it landed uh, there was a racing fancy uh, Jack Hicks living in Kilkenny mm -hmm. and that pigeon landed at his loft there so I well, I saw that he's got my pigeons, so I went to see him. He started talking to me about racing pigeons, and I sort of got interested. And then mm. he said, I'll breed you some. He bred me a few racing pigeons, and I started racing. And first year I started racing with this pigeon. I had one race, and I came through it in one race. And that's sort of what brought me hopes up, and I kept going. Ah, yeah, yeah, very good. What's the origins of your stock birds that you keep, Michael? Well, I've got, got a few goodies and I've got a few imports and that, you know. I actually, I used to race them, but then in about uh, 90, I used to race them on and off uh, at, at, at the time. Mm -hmm. And in uh, 97, I stopped racing. Then in 2005, I decided to race again. So I, uh, I had a few birds from then on, a few goodies and that sort of thing, and danger fields. Uh, had some grizzles and so on, but I, I haven't kept many of them. So I started just with a handful, and then I decided to look around and buy some. Yeah. And at that sale, and, and at that time, there were few sales and that. Uh, actually, Baxton and Snyder had a sale, so I bought a few pigeons there. Mm. And also, John Buddhist had a sale. I bought a few pigeons, and uh, those were my imports that yeah. I bought. And. Uh, so uh, I started mixing them in and breeding. So I've got goodies and imports, mainly Janssen's, James mm -hmm. Bond with the Janssen lines. Yep. And, and they're doing all right for me. Mm. Yeah. You start training your pigeons and what would the distance of the first toss be? Well, normally start, uh, start flying them like uh, probably about March, beginning of March, mm -hmm. and then uh, say about three, four weeks before race, you start training them. Yep. And probably about 25 kilometers or something, or 25, 30 kilometers away yeah. from two or two words, like uh, stop board, is it? Stop yeah. board, yeah. Yeah, around it. Mm. Yeah. How many young birds would you breed for the coming race season? Probably around about 150, but then I'll call a few, especially cocks and that, or some that don't, don't look right. So I'm left with about 120, sometimes even 100 something mm. like that, but 100, 120. Yeah. And uh, there are again, I still have a few older birds, like around about 25, 30 old birds, mm. close to 150. Yeah. Start racing. Yeah. yeah. 
Would you put a bird in the stock loft that hasn't had a race, Michael? Yes, uh, sometimes I breed them especially for stock. I just uh, select the pigeons, mate them and breed them just for stock. They don't even see it. They don't even see an amper or anything like mm. that. They go straight into stock. Yeah. And that's it. And I breed from that bread quite a few good breads from pigeons like that. Yeah. So I don't see anything wrong with that. Yeah to put a bird in the stock, would it be confirmation of the bird or the pedigree of the bird, Michael? Well, uh, actually it's uh, confirmation of the bird has a lot to do with it, how it's sort of, a, how it handles and that, mm -hmm. but uh, mind I look at the pedigree, the parents or grandparents performed well, so the bird's got to carry good genes, I think, so yeah. give it a chance in a stock loft if I do like the bird, and uh, just try it in a stock bird. If, if it were, if it produces pigeons mm -hmm. uh, of uh, good flying value, well, I'll keep it in stock. If not, she'll go flying. Yeah. Things like that. Consider the eye sign of the birds. For instance, um, would you pair two pearlite birds together? Well, I don't consider the eye sign, but uh, just the, uh, as they go for the eye sign pigeons and that sort of thing. But I would pair. Uh, I I'd like to pair pigeons with a different eye color, but I have paired like two pair lights and that, and I have bred, bred winners from them. So I don't see much wrong with it, but uh, I always like to mix them in, like you know, so with different colored ones. Yeah. But they do even the same colored birds. They. They produce good pigeons too if they are good pigeons yeah. themselves. Have you got any uh, theories, Michael, are you, uh, concerning the wing or the throat? Uh, or are you a footman, first feet on the landing board? Well, I don't know. Uh, yeah, it, it's always first feet on a landing board that are the best, but I have considered uh, uh, looking at the wing and sort of studying the wings and that sort of thing. Uh, thing but uh, and. Uh, like a pigeon with a good body and that sort of thing, but uh, my theories have not always, you know, been justified. Sometimes you'd be surprised what comes home first, and uh, whatever does well, I just uh, sort of settle for those pigeons, and if they good, even breed from a mating to the better pigeon. But I put flocked some clumsy pigeons in a good time, so like mm. my second assortment was, you know, from Cuba PD. I never liked her. Yeah. But uh, when uh, she got clocked, I started I put her in stock and started breeding from her. Mm. So uh, there is, I don't have an answer for that sort of thing, you know, this is going to work or that is going to work. Yeah. It's just whatever the pigeon performs, performance is the main thing that, yeah. that I look at. Yeah. Uh, what's your favourite distance you like racing, Michael? Well, I like to race longer distance, but I'd like to see them coming within a die. I don't like them next die, though I have one mile like next die first in a Sosh, but it's not my type of a race. I like to race them within a die, when, when they can make it on a die, mm. and uh, like uh, a good top prize in a Sosh. Yeah. I, that, that sort of makes me happy. Yeah. Uh, that, that's what I like. A good rice, sometimes a headwind rice, but it's got to be on a day. Mm. Kinds of flight do you prefer racing, Michael? Well, I prefer uh, north northwest mainly. Uh, I don't like the east line, whether it's northeast, southeast, or whatever. You know, just mm. don't like too many pigeons are lost on, on it, and there's uh, always less pigeons that you're competing against. But yeah. there's a lot more pigeons, and you can really see the speed of the pigeons when they're coming from the north, you know, mm. especially when it's on a day. Yeah. Uh, do you uh, buy a premix seed or do you mix your own feed, Michael? No, I buy uh, peas and wheat and in most cases I, I don't even mix them, I feed them separately. Mm -hmm. Like I feed, give them so much wheat and then I'll give them peas and that sort of thing. But uh, during the racing season I also mix wheat, I get some a uh, small seed like some barley and mice mm -hmm. make a mixture uh, a certain proportion and uh, feed them with wheat like you know, mm -hmm. during the racing season yeah but apart from that just wheat and peas mine yeah which i get from the farm seed mm -hmm. bill yeah. yeah in your grit mix michael 
Well, I don't buy any grit because I have found a spot on my land where, where there is some sand, sandy, uh, there's, uh, some s sandy soil with a clay in it and that sort of thing. Mm. So what I do is I just dig, dig it out, just get a bucket, go and dig some out and give it to the pigeons. Yep. And I've done it for years without buying anything mm. and it uh, works all right for me. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, what what I found on me on land, like you know, mm. is it for Greek? Yeah. Thanks for your time today, Michael, and all the best for uh, 2011 race season. Thank you very much, and thank you for coming over and uh, sort of uh, talking and that because I never had you at my place. This is what brings you here. Yeah, and you're always welcome. Thank mm. you.